Hey everybody, Len Vertico here. How you doing? Today I'm going to show you the different pruning techniques we use here at Vertico Vineyards. Uh, we have basically three different styles. We do a bilateral cordon, uh, cane pruning, and we do a head trained pruning. So first I'll take you to the bilateral cordon, which is on our Bliss Ranch in the Pinot Noir block, block 14. So here we are in block 14. This is the bilateral cordon. You see there's one arm coming off the trunk in each direction. And each arm has spurs that are separated about four to six inches apart, roughly. And each spur will carry two buds. And each bud will push and grow a shoot that will hopefully have two clusters on each shoot. So if you look carefully here, you see we've got two buds. There's one up here, one down here. Uh, and then this one's also pushing the basal bud right here. And sometimes that happens. And when it does, we go through and we just take those off. We don't want those. And that's what it ends up looking like after we clean it up. And you can see the two clusters are starting to form right here and here on that one. And then over here, you got two clusters forming over here also. That's our bilateral cordon. Okay, we're here in block 24 of our Bliss Ranch. This is uh, one of our Zinfandel blocks where we do the head train pruning. You can see we have six to eight spurs that come out from the trunk in all different directions. It's the same as uh, the spur pruning on the bilateral cordon where we, we cut to two buds per spur. So each of those buds are going to produce a shoot that produces two clusters. Uh, this is preferred training for Zinfandel. Uh, because Zinfandel clusters are so big, the berries are big, they're tight. If you put them on a cordon or on cane prune, uh, the fruit tends to get matted up. But this way, it's all separated out. The clusters are all separated and, and you don't have that chance of matted fruit where it doesn't ripen well or it could rot easier too. Uh, so this is, this is the way that people, a lot of winemakers like to have it. Um, so this is how we do it and this is our Brutico Zinfandel. All right, now we're in block 27 of the Bliss Ranch. It's a Chardonnay block that we cane prune. This, this uh, produces our Brutico Chardonnay and Reserve Chardonnay. Um, we try to get four canes per vine. Uh, and with each cane, there's a renewal spur. I'll show you here. So this is the cane and this is the renewal spur. So next year, one of these, this cane will get cut off. And this will be the new cane, and that'll be the new renewal spur. Now, if you look at this, you can see on this one, there's more growth at the start of the cane and the end of the cane. The middle of the cane, very little growth yet. Uh, it still could push better, but. Right now, the front and the back are getting more energy. It's kind of like being the middle child, which I am. All the attention goes to the first bud and the last bud, but the middle bud doesn't get as much attention. So sometimes they won't bud. You'll get something like this, and it's maybe not going to push at all. It's still a little early, so we don't know. And we call that blind budding. So the reason we do cane pruning, uh, there's less chance of infection because you're doing less cuts than you are on any kind of spur pruning. Uh, and the cut on the cane, you're gonna cut that cane off. So there's not time for any kind of virus to travel through that cane to get into the main part of the trunk. Uh, so it's just a better way 
the pruning it's it's it takes longer to do it's more thinking involved uh, and it's more expensive to do of course too so uh, but but it produces better it, it the levels of, of fruit uh, you're not going to get huge amounts of fruit and you're not going to get uh, light yields you know it's pretty stable uh, it stays pretty level not much fluctuation in, in your yield amounts from year to year so here's another example of some of the cane pruning we do whenever we get a chance we try to arc the cane if we have enough room to do it and it helps that middle bud or middle child grow better more evenly with the others because of apical dominance the higher part of the cane will get more energy so you can see all of these buds are growing pretty even and that'll give us a more even canopy and better fruit so those are the uh, three different types of pruning techniques we use uh, there's some slight variations that we do on some of the blocks depending on what we're trying to accomplish um, we've got some chardonnay out of felice that the clusters are generally small it's a different type of clone um, and so we try to get more fruit out of it by using kicker canes which is basically a, a six bud spur and we'll, we'll put like maybe two or three of those per vine and and that'll get us some more weight on the fruit um, other variations we do in the cane pruning uh, we're trying to get more fruit or less fruit like in uh, the, the Cabernet out of Felice, uh, uh, I'm sorry Cateno uh, the Brutico section we try to keep it down to uh, smaller yields and so we will prune those uh, canes to two canes no more than two canes per vine Whereas the rest of it will be try it, we'll try to get three or four canes per vine. So there's different different things you can do to accomplish you know what you want to do. Um, what goes into the decision making of what type of pruning we're going to use? You know, it, it just matters on the varietal, uh, matters on how vigorous that block is. Um, you know, there's a lot of different different things uh, that go into it. Um, I mean, if we could use cane pruning on everything, you know, we probably would because that's a, a great way of pruning. There's less, like I said earlier, less chance of infection um, and it's a more even yield. Not, not a lot of fluctuation year to year in the yields, uh, but it's very time consuming. Uh, the cane pruning, you know, our, our crew, each person can cane prune about 30, 30 to 40 vines per hour. Whereas on the uh, bilateral cordon, they can do about 70 to 80 vines per hour. And on the head train, because you've got no wires to deal with, they can do about 100 to 120 vines per hour. So it's a time management thing also and a financial decision. But um, everything we try to do, the main thing is to get the vines in balance and make sure we produce good quality fruit. So enjoy your tasting. We'll talk later. Bye. Hey everybody, um, you're looking at my beautiful barrel room. Hey, it's Haas here at Brutico Cellars. Um, so I wanted to show you all the different barrels we like to use. Um, so this first barrel I want to show you is a uh, fusion barrel from World Cooperage. Um, the fusion barrel is a series that it's my blend. Uh, so I kind of put together uh, what I wanted on this. And as you can see here, it's a blend of Eastern European oak, American oak, uh, the different, uh, the toast level, which is the PG P105, and then the different thin grain uh, components and the vintage. This is a 2009 barrel, which right now is holding our 2019 cab from block six, the south side, and the FX10. That's actually the yeast that the, for that block, uh, for that section of the block, actually a couple different yeasts. So you can see um, also in the same, so it's not just one, uh, there's actually a couple of those, then if you go down, it's the same wine, but it's in an American oak barrel. So that's the T.W. Boswell Legacy Special Reserve. Uh, so this is 100% American oak, and also a 2019. So we use a lot of different barrels here. Um, you can see there's some Kerrigan Ann. Um, here is uh, 
our video barrel, yeah, Petite Syrah. We do grow Petite Syrah, we use it for a blender. And we're gonna come up and since we're gonna be talking about Pinot, let's talk about the Pinot barrel. That's the video barrel. Um, video barrel is a French oak barrel. It's a special blend of the cooperage itself. This is actually a 2014, probably the last vintage we'll use it for um, Pinot. Um, alongside of it is a Bertrange, uh, medium long toast uh, barrel. So the Bertrange is a forest, uh, sub Appalachian forest in France. And I think that if I remember right, it's the northern part of the central forest to do that. Uh, down below, you'll see what's called the Allegro barrel. Allegro barrel is a low impact barrel. Again, these are some older barrels that we still use. Um, and then right alongside, there is a brand new video barrel from 2019. So these are, pin these are barrels all used for Pinot Noir. Um, the Pinot barrels are a little bit different. They're called Burgundian. And just to show you, that's the difference in barrels. So just like wine glasses, barrels actually have different sizes too. Um, the one on your right is a Burgundian barrel. Um, the one on your left is called a Bordeaux Export or a Bordeaux barrel. The reason why Burgundian barrels are shorter, squattier, more rounded is because it's Pinot Noir and Chardonnay that you get moved around a lot more. Um, so they sell a lot earlier. So you need to be able to move the barrel, roll the barrel so it's easier to roll. The Bordeaux barrel, you know, traditionally you're thinking about Merlots and Cabs and red wines that lay down for quite a while. It's longer and skinnier. There's also what's called a Chateau barrel, which is even longer and skinnier. Um, it, that's because they stack better because they don't move them as much. So once they fill them, they leave them for longer periods of time to come out. So unlike the, the the burgundy barrel where it gets moved a lot more. So just kind of wanted to show you a couple of barrel differences um, and some of the different barrels we do use around here. And we'll kind of go a little bit more into depth about different barrels as the series continues. So uh, anyway, hope you guys uh, are enjoying the wines and have a good time. So this is the uh, Brutico Cellar. Hey everybody, Haas here at Brutico Cellars again. Another shot of Duncan's Peak. Uh, we're out back at the winery here, just kind of enjoying this beautiful spring day. It's a great view we get every day here. I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, barrel staves and the oak. Um, so this is a stave that I pulled out of a barrel. It's a barrel that's no longer in use. Um, that's where actually the head of the barrel sets in. That's the inside where the wine touches the stave. Um, and I kind of cracked it in half because I want to show you a couple things. Um, number one, you can see that on the oak, you can see the penetration of wine. It really doesn't go that deep. And it only goes, the wine really only goes inside of a barrel as far as the toast is. So let me see if I can get you a little bit better shot here with some better light out here in the sun. And there it is. So as I go over the top, you can see the toast. See, it only really goes in that same amount of the wine. The wine only goes as far as the toast. So when we're talking about toasting a barrel, it's caramelizing those sugars. And if we look really close, and I'll see if I can get a decent shot of this, it's kind of hard. You're going to see a lot of little like uh, straws, like little holes. And that's the, where we're talking about how the Italios cuts it off in the, in the flow. That's, uh, that's basically where all the nutrients flow up. And you see on this, they're very straight and they come right out. And you can see that on the grains on the side of the oak, um, you want that nice straight grain. You can see there where my thumb's at. See how it's nice and straight and goes straight up. So that way it doesn't cross over. Otherwise what happens is if the grain crosses over like this, then you end up with a leak. But you can see from the toasting and from the inside, that's all we're talking about. Maybe a quarter of an inch to an eighth of an inch max on that. That's raw wood right there that's never been toasted. That's the outside of the barrel, so it darkens up. Again, it's a small penetration um, just from aging. So that's what we're looking at. So again, so that's our barrel, that's a barrel stave. All right, whole cluster pressing. In the view of the forklift operator. Brutico 2019 Chardonnay. Filopino going to the press.
nice big walk of shots, nice and gentle. Large diameter posing. It all ends up going there. So nice open drain press. Sucked them out. Now it's time to put the rest of the must in the press. <laughs> 